you got plans, no? Yes. Yeah. The first one was a pulmonary embolism, which is actually a blood clots or blood clot or blood clots in your lungs due to my uh, professional job. You know what I mean? What I do professional do due to my work. You know, whether I'm sitting down all the time at the piano, which was probably not it. I'm pretty sure it was more of the long hours of breeding. Yeah, look straight. Look straight, refer to come over. Look at her? Nope, refer to come over. Wait for her to come over. <laughs> hey, my name's Brittany. I am Dara's daughter, and I work at a doctor's office in the call center. Hey, I gotta do this right this second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. He wants natural anyway. Oh, so I can sit here and eat my salad? Yeah. He's not really. I remember finding out about her being in the hospital sometime in, I think, either early September or late September, heading into October. It was definitely during the pandemic already. Yo. You want some of this? No, no, thank you. You want some of this? Don't forget the brown rice. Now, you should, he should just hang out with us. That's the only way this going to work. I was really destroyed because I already knew we were in the midst of COVID, and I didn't know what she was in the hospital for. So I instantly thought it was COVID. Then when I found out what she was in the hospital for, it really broke me because I'm like, I already know that my mom has health conditions from the past, and I didn't want her to deal with anything more strenuous, especially during this delicate time. Should she have kissed me? No, you no, okay. Jesus, you're forcing it. How are we forcing it? I'll kiss her. I think that was the hardest part when I was trying to talk to her and I would hear in her voice the struggle. She really couldn't breathe and she kept coughing so much. It was, that was probably the hardest part. Not seeing her, I mean, I already don't see her every day, but not being able to be next to her and care for her and, and physically just assist her in my own way or even just give her that support and make her feel relaxed and make her feel better. When we hang out, it's just really a good time. We, we laugh, we go out for exercise sometimes. We may go out there and get something to eat. We may just go to Walmart, um, but we really just spend our time laughing. Like, I can't even explain what about. Sometimes it'll be something we both saw at the same time or something we heard and we just take one thing and go. We're like a sitcom in person. And that's the best way to explain it. Like when you see it, you, you'd have to be there. Chase it. She, she's not going to get it. That's what you it. get. She, she, you're going to have to get it. <laughs> Woman in the car is looking. Woman in the car is just looking at us like, what? It's a struggle right now. Which one yeah, is that's it? That's the basics. The um. Oh, you said down. basics. Yeah. The, no, the blue. That's what I thought. The blue with the blue unitard. Yeah. <laughs> I know, okay, so definitely by the seventh because we had a rehearsal today and for the first time ever I said, I don't think I could make it to a rehearsal. You know, that's not me, I always go to rehearsal. And uh, I didn't feel well. It was a weird kind of feeling. It wasn't even just flu symptoms. It felt like flu symptoms and then some, but I can't really describe it. I just knew something wasn't right. I remember back in October, I was still working at my previous job, and when I was outside on a break, I got a call from her, and when I picked up the phone, I, I had a feeling that something was wrong, because when she spoke, she was just very, very soft-spoken, very kind of weak, short of breath, and she told me that she had fainted. Um, outside of my house. When I got home that day, I just remember seeing her sitting in a chair. I called her when I pulled up outside. I told her I'm coming in, and I came inside, and she was just sitting in her chair, and she just, she just looked very, very weak, very frail, and um, I could tell that she hadn't moved very much uh, since I had gotten off the phone with her. She wanted to call an ambulance, 
and um and, and get her to the house and you know have them come and get her and I just I I was absolutely not okay with that I, I there was no way selfishly there was no way that I could see my mother you know being put onto a gurney and and rolled out of the house it probably took us a good 20 minutes to get to my car because my mother literally could not take more than like two short steps without needing to basically take a break without needing to sit down otherwise she was in danger of like passing out again I my heart know I know my lungs been through something but I'm good yeah it's funny because once I got to the hospital I'm in the hands of people who can actually, you know, uh, diagnose and take care of the situation. Because at home, all we're doing is self-diagnosing, self-medicating, back and forth to the store with whatever we think fits our symptoms, whatever medication, and it just wasn't working. By the time I got back upstairs, got upstairs and admitted, the pace had slowed down. But at that point, that's when it got kind of real. I was hooked up to the machines and and still coughing heavily. I couldn't, I, I think I was waking the whole floor up, you know. At that point, was still waiting for that COVID test results to come in, even though they told me they didn't think that's what the issue was. And I didn't have COVID. I was so grateful for that, because at least now I knew, at that point, I knew what I was dealing with. What was painful was my ribs after coughing for days and days and days on end. Do you remember, right? Day and night. And, um. Whoa, shit! Oh, Jesus! God! You got the mother of The shortness of breath was incredible. I had never experienced anything like that before when you literally can't walk two feet like that was it that was not an exaggeration you just don't have it it just feels like you can't move this is long as getting back together i think we take that for granted like you we walk and we breathe we walk and we breathe you can't breathe you know so no it, it didn't hurt but the um it was just the coughing some business yes What I didn't know is that because a lot of people started working from home, blood clots in the legs became more common because a lot of people were not as active as they used to be. Your commute is now from your bedroom to the living room. So that's what we're thinking that it was occupational. You know, uh, it, it, it could have been a, a few things, but occupational is the one that makes sense because I also had one in my wrist at one point. My mother is a certified stylist. It's what she does. She's very good at it. She's dedicated to the craft. She loves to do it. Anybody who's ever sat in a chair will tell you that. But on the flip side of that, it I know that it just it, it wears her out. For the most part, what I do takes maybe somewhere between four to seven hours. And if I could fit three people in in one day, trying to make sure a big part of that was them. You picked that out real good, too. <laughs> so it definitely wears her out. Wow. Um, the fingers, <laughs> all of the braiding, obviously all of the standing and hunching over the chair. It's, it's very rough. Um, but it's also what she does. She presses on despite that stuff because she is a hard worker and she's dedicated to what she does. From the hours to the setup to the cleanup to going to the store for supplies and you know what I mean. So I would I would actually say the uh, wear and tear absolutely on the body. At the end of the day, though, my mother's far from a complainer. That's the last thing she'll ever be. Um, she's taught me and she's told me several times that no matter what's going on in life, you have to carry on. You have to press on. You have to keep going. 
Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Are you okay? Can you do something again? Nope, sure. No batting of the eyelashes. Now the shine on your forehead is very angelic. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this is actually gorgeous. My mother is my lifeline. I genuinely don't know what I would do without her. Here you read them. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to a woman who stands for all that is good about mothers. You stand for compassion, you stand for encouragement, you stand for unconditional love. With all that standing, it's a good thing you have plenty of cute shoes. <laughs> I love you. Have a great day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank and you. Mom you. inspires me to continuously chase my dreams. No matter what obstacles she's had in her life, whether it was sickness, whether it was terrible people, whether it was finances, she always kept going and pushed for her dreams. And she, she's exactly what she wanted to be since she was three. <laughs> she's a singer. She's self-employed. She works for herself. She doesn't answer to anybody. She has a great client base with great friends. So I aspire to be like that. I aspire to be happy in what I'm doing, completely happy. And I have to answer to anybody but me. I want to be my own boss, just like this. I couldn't get my temptation microphone thing working. I tried. Amen. I tried. Ma, I cannot begin to thank you for all that you've done and continue to do for me. Through my adversity, be careful. Through my adversity, my struggles, and my triumphs, you've been my number one fan, and I love you beyond words. You've been a lifeline, a warrior with an undying resilience and an unflinching drive to press onwards and upwards regardless of circumstance. Thank you for inspiring me every single day to be a better version of myself. Happy Mother's Day. You know, every time you speak... <laughs> when I tell you that my mother is my best friend, my number one fan, and the person that I look for in other people, that's 100% that's exactly it. Um, I don't even know what more to say. Words really can't even can't even express um, how much she means to me. And as turbulent a year as this has been, um, I'm proud to say that I've watched her battle this illness and I've watched her overcome it. Um, and I'm proud to see her standing tall and still smiling through it all. Be honest with you, I'm proud of myself, and that is uh, in no way, shape, or form me boasting or bragging or anything. You know what I mean? But again, um, things haven't always been simple. I wouldn't, I won't say, oh, it's been hard. Mm -hmm. I won't say that. But what I will say is that it hasn't always been one plus one is two. It hasn't always been simple. And again, very grateful for whatever was placed upon me to make it through some stuff you know what I mean and uh, raise kids is great and nifty as you and your sister you know what I mean and I've uh, come through and I'm at a place now where like if, if we could just get this crazy world to switch up <laughs> and go back to being the very pleasant place it would be awesome we could do something about them cicadas not showing up next week you know what i mean it would be awesome so i'm just proud to have made it up to this point and i hope to keep going and you have no idea that's not to put pressure on you but it is to keep the pressure on you and a it's a it's a gentle pressure keep going you know what i mean i want to see the fruits of my fruits you know what i mean do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, this might use it. The fruits, okay. Yeah, this might use it. <laughs>